Hey guys, good afternoon. So today I'm working on the P48, which is our 1948 Chevy 3100, and uh, I'm getting rid of our old three-inch uh, drop blocks that I stuck under there, and the U-bolts that I uh, hokey fab together and uh, welded together. So I'm gonna get uh, get rid of those, which were for mock-up purposes, and replace all that with our nice cast iron two-inch blocks that I got in. Uh, these are ground force uh, two-inch drop blocks for the S10 application, which is what our rear axle and springs came out of. So they're actually designed, you know, for what we've got and should fit really nice. Uh, they're cast iron, so they're solid, uh, as opposed to what's in there is like uh, tubing. Uh, they're fabricated tubing blocks. Um, so these should be a little bit stronger, a little bit shorter, so we won't have uh, as much of a wrap problem. I think we're probably going to go with some kind of traction bar at some point uh, that'll that'll take the wrap out of the rear axle. Uh, so I'm going to get those on there. The U-bolts look good. Um, they're not quite as beefy as the stuff I used to run back in the four-wheel drive days, but uh, they should do the job. Um, they're a little bit more than 3 8 uh, actually a little over 7 16 so pretty good size U-bolt. And what really impressed me about this kit was uh, the hardware is top-notch and it comes with, uh, they come with nylock flanged uh, nuts for the U-bolts. So that's kind of nice. You know, most of the time you get lock washers and standard serrated nut or standard nut. Um, so that's kind of nice that it comes with uh, lock nuts. Um, I pulled the old uh, rear shackles off the springs. Uh, they were just hanging there because we'd left them on uh, when the axle was removed. And we're going to be using a, a little bit longer of a shackle. Probably a good eh, three-eighths to half inch longer um, rear shackle. These are out of uh, my old 1500 GMC Sierra. Um, it's just a nicer looking, probably a little bit stronger than, than that style of uh, shackle. And what's really cool uh, is that we're going to be able to use make use of the old shackles. Um, I was going to have to build a shackle hanger, basically a three-sided hanger that would capture the top part of the shackle and the bottom part will mount into the leaf spring. So I was going to build a three-sided box welded into the bottom of the frame uh, to mount the shackle. With, uh, with these old shackles though, we, I, I can take these and make use of them. Um, because our new shackle actually fits perfectly into the old shackle and it has the proper amount of clearance all the way around so that's kind of nice that'll save me a little bit of trouble making a box I'm gonna take these cut the uh, cut the ears off of them make it three-sided weld that into the frame and then gusset it and uh, that should be perfect and a nice clean factory look for uh, our rear end on the truck here so that saves me a little bit of fab time and um, uh, makes it a little bit easier, so uh, that's kind of nice. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get started on uh, putting these shackles in there and getting our new new U-bolts put into place. Hey guys, so I got the two inch blocks on, took the three inch uh, fabricated tubing blocks that were in there out um, and installed our new U-bolts and uh, lock nut hardware, which was nice. The U-bolts were the correct length, so I didn't have to trim them. Uh, the lock nuts threaded on nice, so everything's real, real clean under there and proper. Um, so now we don't have to worry about the rear end uh, falling out from under the truck, right? Uh, I thought I'd take a minute to show you our fatality here. One of our, one of my hokey fab welded U-bolts snapped when I was taking it out. Um, just the rotational force of taking this little 
rusty nut loose uh, was enough to snap that weld. And I, you know, I didn't prep these out. I didn't uh, take my time welding them. I wasn't too concerned about it. I just uh, just ran a quick bead around there just so they would hold together for a few days and hold the weight of the truck up. But I thought it was a good point to illustrate, you know, the, the difference between your filler metal uh, in your weld bead and the, the parent metal in these U-bolts. You know, U-bolts and all threaded bolts are built to stretch and lengthen and twist and take that kind of rotational force along its longitudinal longitudinal axis yeah uh, but uh, you know a well bead isn't meant to take that kind of force it's not flexible it's not uh, going to stretch certainly so you know when you when you weld these two materials together you know the there's gonna be tempering that goes on it's gonna be a lot of a lot of heat there and you're going to harden uh, harden the flexible material of your parent metal and your bolt's not going to stretch anymore. It's just going to fatigue, crack, and break. And that's why we don't weld U-bolts together and use them on the street because they're not built. Uh, you know, they're not built to be welded. Uh, they're forged as one piece, and you just can't you can't weld it and expect it to stretch and twist and uh, take those kinds of loads and forces uh, that a bolt, a threaded bolt, will take. So I've marked the old shackles here uh, with a rough line where I'm going to cut them. I'm going to take my angle grinder with the cutoff wheel, cut that off, round the corner over, and uh, take this lip off the top and prep them out, get them ready to weld in there, and uh, clean up the frame, locate them on top of our leaf spring shackle, tight, tight against the frame, clamp them in place, double check my measurements side to side and front to back, and uh, weld them in there. So the next thing I've got to do now is install the shackle hangers. That's my next step. I'm going to put these on the leaf springs. Mark my location where the leaf spring is currently resting at, which should be right height. Um, just give me give myself a reference mark on the frame where that's going to be. I'm then going to take a piece of string or a piece of wire and measure the length of our leaf spring from eyelet to eyelet along the arch on the main leaf. And then when I know the exact length of our main leaf when it's completely flat, I'll mark that as a reference mark on the frame as well. So my objective here is to set my shackle at about a 70 degree angle at the ride height, but I also need to know that when the, sh when the spring goes completely flat and the arch goes inverse, like when you bottom out through a really gnarly dip or something, uh, and we go to the bump stops, the spring goes into negative arch and it curls back on itself the opposite direction. So I need to make sure that when that happens and the, the spring goes flat and then negative that we have enough movement in our shackle that the spring can go completely flat without the shackle banging into the frame and causing the spring to bind up and possibly bend the spring or break the spring. So um, that's what I'm going to do is, is mark out the leaf spring, the length of it, mark it on the frame, mark where I'm at at ride height now and set my shackle position so that I cover the full range of movement of the leaf spring. Okay guys, so I got the, uh, I got the rear shackle hangers in place. Everything looks great. Um, I spent a lot of time measuring everything to make sure I had it square, straight, and centered. Um, you know, I started with references to the back of the frame and the inside of the frame rail and the outside of the frame rail just to make sure my shackle hanger was on line with the spring uh, and the same on both sides. Uh, I then put a level on the outside of the tire uh, at the very top of the tire, leveled that level, measured to my frame 
frame rail on both sides um, and that dimensions the same I had uh, 15 and 3 8 in the front and 14 in the rear of the level and that's because right at the tread and that's because um, our frame in the back tapers it, uh, it, it it's wider at the bumper than it is at the bump stops and at the front uh, leaf spring hangers so because of that hourglass shape to the frame is why the dimensions are what they are but they're the same left to right um, I also dropped a plumb line uh, from the outside of the frame because that's flush and, and that's vertical so I dropped a plumb line down uh, on both sides and measured my axle left to right to make sure I was on, on uh, center between the frame rails um, and everything's everything's square straight and perfect so I went ahead and tacked it in um, suspension feels great uh, the truck settled down about three quarters of an inch um, higher than it was with the three inch blocks which was right where I wanted it like I couldn't have asked for I couldn't have asked for anything more we're tucking just a little bit of tread which is nice uh, once the front the extra weight of the radiator and the hood and all that stuff is front bumper is put on the front of the truck that's going to give us that nice street rod rake uh, we're going to be tucking a little bit of tire in the front and we're tucking just the top part of the tread in the back it's perfect so I'm super excited about that um, I did find out that our passenger side rear fender is uh, is is out of dimension um, when I first stuck the rear end in there and squared up my shackle hangers and started measuring things I thought oh I, I measured the outside of the fender just to check and uh, you know you could visually tell that that the passenger side fender was uh, or the axle was further in on that on that fender so I started measuring and when I measure from the frame rail to the uh, outside of the fender front and rear of the tire uh, it looks like the passenger side front edge of the t of the fender is pulled out about an inch different than the driver's side. The driver's side tucks in nice and the passenger side is bowed out quite a bit. And there's a lot of evident damage there uh, on this fender. So I'm guessing the fender's just had a rough life and that's why, uh, <laughs> that's why it's so much different than the other side. Uh, but, you know, dropping the plumb line on the frame I know that our axle is square and centered within our frame rails so uh, the body work will have to be adjusted uh, appropriately so uh, I've just got that tacked in place I'm not gonna burn it in uh, just yet once I get the rear drive shaft in place um, and uh, do a little bit more fab work uh, I'll go ahead and burn all that stuff in I just wanna want to make sure that I don't have to adjust anything. Uh, my shackle angle came out a little steeper than uh, what I was planning at 70 degrees. It's, it's just a little steeper than that. Um, but I know we have plenty of clearance, uh, plenty of room for our shackle to, or our spring to flatten our shackle to move back without hitting the frame, so that's good. And um, next step for this is going to be uh, installing a cross member for the upper eyelets on our rear shocks to bolt into. Um, the lower leaf spring uh, plates have the shock mounts for the lower shock mounts so we need to locate upper shock mounts because uh, the stock ones on the outside of the frame rail wouldn't work. Um, so I'm going to run a cross member uh, across the frame and uh, run a couple bolts through it, probably threaded studs like a standard shock mount stud. Um, and that will that will give us a, a, a top location for our shock. We wanted a nice comfortable ride height, uh, something that had lots of travel. Uh, we're going to put some good shocks on it, and it's going to uh, it's going to handle and ride really well. So let me take you guys around and show you where we're at. So this is approximately the front ride height. Uh, the front of the truck is going to come down a little bit with the weight of the radiator and the front bumper. All of, the, all of the supporting pieces that are missing here, the, the front hood, all of that extra weight is going to bring this down probably an inch. Uh, so we're going to be tucking a little bit of tire in the front, not too low, not too high. I think a, a good, comfortable ride height with plenty of clearance. This is, the, uh, this is some of the fender damage here. It may be hard to tell on camera, but you can see somebody's really shrunk it with the... Uh, with a 
welder here. Uh, they've gone at it and tried to beat it out and just shrunk this whole section of fender which I think buckled the bottom. Uh, same thing on the inside here. Pretty gnarly, uh, gnarly welding there. So it's, it's sticking out an inch more than the driver's side. This is our rear height. I think that's exactly where I wanted it. Couldn't ask for anything more than that. You can see our shackle back in here. Really nice sitting, uh, sitting height for the truck. Well, guys, that's going to wrap it up for me uh, for today. Um, I talked to the owner of the truck here a little while ago, and we kind of went over the project and where we're at and and uh, what the next major steps are going to be and um, you know I've kind of discussed that already on the video here um, steering system is is our next step um, if I had steering in it now I could push it up to the top of the hill and and at least drive it down the hill um, so <laughs> steering system and brakes uh, rear drive line and the thing will be drivable so we're we're that close um, so those are the things I'm focusing on next we've already knocked out a bunch of big steps in this project you know we we started off doing a motor swap that kind of evolved into a whole uh, whole build of the truck because there were so many things that needed to be addressed to support that motor swap and things that needed to be addressed uh, that just made sense to do um, while we were into it so um, you know the projects swollen a little little bit more than uh, we we wanted it to initially but it's it, it's going to be a really really nice car and it uh, it looks great everything fits correctly there's no not going to be any rubbing issues or so I'm trying to be very meticulous and spend a lot of time where it's needed and uh, number one you know I'm building the truck to be safe reliable so I don't have to redo any work or, or have something break and fail um, so you know number one reliability and safety um, uh, number two performance and number three uh, you know good looks those are kind of the order of things um, with this project and I think we're accomplishing all of those goals so far so that's it for me today guys uh, thanks for watching if you like the content if you like the p48 project or you think uh, you know the work is being done well please leave your comments and uh, like and subscribe